So I'm Scott Strzok. I work for a firm called Geosyntec Consultants. And um, I, my, my job description is pretty simple. I'm a stormwater geek. So I really do kind of geek out on this stuff. Um, I did work for EPA for about four years um, doing research on different stormwater, erosion sediment control types of stuff. So um, I really am kind of a, a geeky kind of guy on this. So if I get too excited, go ahead and say, hey, you know, calm down a little bit. Um, so. So we'll be talking a little bit about, um, as Bill said, the stormwater compliance here. Um, and this is kind of the, the introduction. I'm just gonna kind of give a, 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 a be brief um, regulatory background, talk a little bit about the pollution effects. A lot of the stuff you guys are gonna know, a lot of it's you know, kind of you know, something that everybody kind of understands, but we just wanna reinforce it to, to make sure that we have a good understanding of it. Um, we'll talk about some, some best management practices, often termed BMPs. We use them a lot of different types of, uh, of um, uh, areas of, of work, but these BMPs are going to be specific to um, stormwater management. So uh, we'll talk about construction sites, um, good housekeeping, illicit discharges, as well as um, some of the record keeping. Again, I have questions at the end, but do feel free to, to uh, you know, raise your hand if you have a question. All right. so. And I do move around a little bit, so those of you who were right, waiting to fall asleep, um, <laughs> I might come over and nudge you or something like that. No. Um, so first we'll talk about NPDES permits. So NPDES permits were established under the Clean Water Act, this, this act that um, our Congress passed um, in 72, and it's had a number of different um, changes along the way. Um, but really what it was trying to do is, you know, everybody's heard about the rivers on fire, right? Has anybody... You guys remember that? So some of the old, older folks here, the rivers on fire. Do you, anybody know where that was? <laughs> like New Jersey? It was New Jersey. That's a good guess, though. So. Ohio. Ohio, yes. Anybody know what river it was? Chattahoga. That's right. See, we've got some, some people that are aware of some of the history. So the, our rivers were catching on fire, right? We weren't, we weren't really dealing with our, our runoff and, and our um, chemicals that were going to the rivers. And guess what? One caught on fire. And so that's the, been used as the example. Um, and then we've had a lot of uh, uh, you know, environmentalists come along um, and, and have had uh, um, a lot of impact on trying to get some of the um, uh, regulations passed. We had the EPA that developed in 72, which was after that. Um, and so in that, the Clean Water Act you know, was really looking at trying to reduce the number of discharges of pollutants to, to our water systems. And specific, specifically, it focused on point sources. So NPDES stands for National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. Obviously, we're trying to eliminate those discharges. So that was the point of it. So what that governed is that governed different areas called MS4s, and so the non-point and point sources, so we had that point source I was just mentioning. We also have something called non-point sources, which are more distributed, and we're going to get a little quiz on that in just a bit. You guys didn't think you were getting off without a test, did you? No test? We'll have a little test. It won't be too hard. <laughs> um, so MS4s. MS4 is, it stands for Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. Again, you know, our government really likes to use these acronyms, MS4. Um, and it really is, is uh, dealing with uh, conveyance systems. It typically deals with municipalities. But the Denver Federal Center actually is an MS4. It's a non-traditional MS4. Um, and so they get their own permit. Other non-traditional types of entities are like universities. Um, so like DU, um, CU, those are non-traditional uh, MS4s that get their own permit. So um, really what they're, uh, what they're trying to do is, is permit these areas so that they can regulate the discharges um, and, and try to prevent the pollutants getting to the stormwater. So they're not a combined sewer. People know what combined sewers are. We don't have too many. We do actually have one here in Denver, um, but we don't have too many of those um, in this area or out west. They're typically back east and not part of a POTW or a publicly owned treatment works. Everybody recognizes this map of the facility here, the Denver Federal Center. So we're going to use this as a little bit of a context. Does anybody know our receiving waters that we have here on the, the center's site? Anybody raise your hand and say, I know it. It's McIntyre Gulch. McIntyre Gulch. OK, right. So there's McIntyre Gulch right there. And then we, do we have any others? Huh? The Ag Ditch. That's actually technically a receiving water as well. So. Both of those two, and you can see the McIntyre Gulch going across and then the Ag Ditch coming from, uh, from north to south there. 
And then, um, is there one coming in from the south, to the north, to McIntyre? It's right along here. It's, it's an intermittent one. It's not flowing all the time. What's that? It's Welch ditch. Yes, the Welch Ditch. Good. So we're treated as, a, as an MS4 here, and we, have, we do have these receiving waters that we have to be aware of. So these NPDES permits, they have all these requirements, and it's listed here, one through six. I'm not going to go through each of them, but these are the facility has to develop a stormwater management plan, and it has to address each and one of these items. So the permit, we go through and talk about the different public education and outreach. This is actually a part of that public education outreach, this training. Um, we have to talk about um, public participation involvement, et cetera, et cetera, through this, all of this stuff. And we're going to hit on some of this um, in this presentation. Um, and then there's some specifics that are, have to do with what Colorado um, needs. So this, this program description document, that's essentia essentially what our stormwater management plan here does. So I mentioned these terms before. I'm just going to go over them real quick. Guys, don't get lost in all the, the text that's on the slide. Just think point source. Well, what is that? Any discernible, of course, the government likes to use a lot of words to describe these things because they're quite broad, but yet they need to be specifics for when they get challenged in court. So it includes all of this. Discernible, combined, and discrete conveyance, such as a pipe, ditch, channel, tunnel, conduit, well, discrete fissure, probably a challenge sometime to, to include that language in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's really um, any discharge that has a, a, a place where you can determine where it came from. Although it, return flows from agriculture and agricultural stormwater runoff are not considered point sources. So point source, you can usually determine where it's coming from. Non-point source, it may be hard or it's an agricultural source. Pollutant, we've he heard this word before. Um, it's defined very broadly. Dredge spoil. A lot of people don't think that that dirt that we just dug up and we put on the street is a pollutant. It is, okay? Solid waste, incinerator residue, blah, blah, blah. It has all the definitions there. Um, so it has a real broad definition of what pollutants are, can be. A lot of people don't realize that even warm water, so water that's storm water, for instance, that's hit the street. You know, we know that during the summer, like last year when we had 105 degrees out there and it's hot, that water, when it gets warmed up, is now actually a pollutant. It's considered a pollutant there. So, so all of these are regulated by waters of the U.S. That, again, is a very broad definition. It includes the, the list up here. But guess what? That includes agricultural ditches, some streams that are, even have intermittent flow, even though that they um, are, are often considered fishable, swimmable. So it might have intermittent flow as well. By the way, can everybody hear me OK? I don't need to grab a mic. All right, OK. So intermittent streams are included up here. Territorial seas, all right, good. We got those covered under waters of the US. OK, what pollutants are regulated? So this is just an example of different pollutants. So we have these conventional pollutants. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of these. And then toxic pollutants. Um, and then non-conventional pollutants like uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, which are used in fertilizers, for instance. OK. Pollutant effects on the environment. We know that um, we're calling it a pollutant already, so it probably um, has some issue with, uh, with what it does in the environment. So detergent, salts, fertilizers, I'd mentioned those. The big thing is that they can cause poor water quality conditions um, and harm aquatic wildlife, okay? A lot of us like to go fishing in, in different places, uh, in the reservoirs, et cetera. So, you know, when, when, uh, when we're getting our stormwater runoff or we're, we're putting our, our fertilizer on our, our uh, yards and so forth, and that ends up running off um, because it got onto the sidewalk or it got into the street or something like that, where does that go? It goes to our waterways because that's where we're draining our stuff. Well, it has an effect when it gets there. Uh, warm temperatures can warm the waters. The, the nutrients, for instance, can call, cause algal blooms and uh, get all the algae that grows in there. And then next thing you know, our fish start dying because they're not getting enough oxygen. So it um, happens a fair, fair bit. Does anybody, has anybody heard of this lately in the news about some uh, fish kills in Colorado? Recently on the, the, the South Platte, um, right out by Suncor, they had some 
discharges of some pollutants that uh, ended up resulting in some fish kills there. Um, so it's, it's not all that uncommon. Um, it, we tried to avoid it, obviously, and somebody got penalized for it, um, and somebody had to go in and clean it up. But, um, so it, is, it can be quite costly. So we want to make sure that we're, we're avoiding that. So we're up to our first quiz. Everybody ready? <coughs> Getting loose. All right. So we're going to look at point source or non-point source. So raise your right hand if it's point source, left hand if it's a non-point source. I'm kidding. Just, just raise your hand if you think it's a point source. Okay? If it's a non-point source, we'll keep them down. That means you're wrong if you don't know, right? <laughs> okay. So what is this? Point source. Point source. If it's a point source, raise your hand. Yeah, everybody's hand should be raised. This is? Anybody recognize it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> A publicly owned t treatment <laughs> plan, <laughs> POTW, that's right. So this is where we take care of our, uh, <laughs> our waste. How about this one? Point source? That's a good question. Where does it come from? The other side of the road, right? <laughs> but the, the key is that it's flowing from a pipe. You're right, it depends on what's on the other side. If it's just forested area, it would be a non-point. But it's going through a pipe, so that actually determines that it is a point source if that upper side of that is, um, for instance, a municipality or the Denver Federal Center. So just seeing it coming out of a pipe already puts you towards that point source side, depending on, on what's up there. Okay, how about that? Non-point source or point source? It is a point source. All municipal systems have control over their stormwater runoff, and so that is now a point source. Uh, it, this, is, this has actually been, been um, challenged recently in court um, in California. LA County um, is challenging whether they should be considered part of the, uh, the point sources, um, and this has gone to the Supreme Court, and the decision was that they are responsible for the runoff off from their surfaces, so that they are now a point source. So everything that comes off from that, even though it's distributed, so some people think that, well, if it's distributed all over the place, it's a, it's a non-point source. It actually is still a point source because the municipality has a permit to control that. So um, that was kind of a tricky question. Yeah. Non-point, point, come on, let's see the hands. Point. Point source. How about this? Doing some development? Yeah, good. I like to see the hands. That's a point source. Even though it's uh, kind of distributed and there's maybe some new development there, that is still considered a point source. How about this? <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to swim in that one. <laughs> point or non point? Non point source. Why? Agriculture. That's right. That one? Same thing, non-point source. Although I'll tell you right now that they're looking at regulations to start not permitting this, but to regulate um, runoff from, from agricultural sites because they've found that everybody, has anybody heard about the, um, the problem in the Gulf of Mexico and the anoxia, the lack of oxygen in there? A lot of it's attributed to uh, agricultural within the Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio watersheds that um, is bringing all that all the pollutants essentially down to the, to the Gulf of Mexico, and it uses up a lot of that oxygen, and next thing you know, you have fish kills and so forth down there. So it's called the dead zone for the part that has uh, very little oxygen. And it shrinks and grows and so forth yearly. Yeah. Who exactly would be regulating this? Who would be regulating this? It would be EPA. What they're actually trying to do is not regulate the farmers. What they're trying to do is promote best management practices to be able to regulate or to be able to, to uh, treat the water that's running off from the agricultural fields. So, you know, in our original design, and you'll see this um, in a minute, we like to, to make our, uh, our stormwater systems very efficient. Get the water off, get it into the stream, right? Same thing with the agricultural system. We put all that tile in there, right? So anybody grow up on farms, work on farms? Okay, didn't you go out and put, put the tile in there? Make sure that you, didn't, you get your wet spots and it drained to whatever drainage ditch you were going to. So it worked pretty well. Well, we're finding out that maybe um, that efficiency is not so good. How about this, point or non-point? 
non-point source, although this one in particular is regulated under another type of permit called a CAFO, a Combined <coughs> Animal Feeding Operation. Okay, so this actually could be in Colorado, right? Greeley, outside Greeley. How about that one, point source or non-point? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from a point source, but it's, <laughs> I would consider that an agricultural um, waste, so we'll call it a non-point source. Okay. All right. So I'd mentioned these things, best management practices, BMPs, and really what we're trying to do is prevent some of that stormwater pollution, you know, from reaching our waterways. Um, so when we do this, uh, we're really looking at um, you guys because you really are off in the first line of defense, especially contractors, et cetera. You guys are seeing this stuff day in, day out, out there. Um, and we're trying to encourage you to use good housekeeping practices. You know, when you're, when you're digging, getting the dig permits and filling out the forms. Um, personnel training, like being in here. So that's one thing. We call those, we call those types of practice, best management practices, non-structural, because we're not building anything. We're learning about it. We're doing things like that, educating people. And then we have structural BMPs, um, which are the things that we build or put in the ground, et cetera. Um, so we'll get into some of those in a bit. And so there we're talking about the actual stormwater BMPs that we put in for post-construction, during construction. Um, and then we have uh, our secondary containment for chemical storage, things like that. Those are also structural types of BMPs. So a lot of people are like, what's the big deal? It's been raining for eons, and, and, uh, and why is stormwater a problem? Well, if you look at this, and this is across the nation, over 34,000 miles are impaired, and oftentimes it's from stormwater runoff. Those are going to be located mostly around our urban systems. Over a million acres of all lakes are impaired. Okay, a million acres. Do you know, even right around here, we've got some impairments in our lakes, our reservoirs? Cherry Creek? Anybody know? What's in, what, it's, what is its impairment? They've got some mercury, but they've got actually a, what they call a TMDLR. It's an annual maximum daily load or annual maximum daily load for phosphorus. Phosphorus, of all things. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Um, and then, of course, estuaries. We don't, won't worry about the estuaries um, here in, in Colorado. So one of the causes of that is often our impervious surfaces, and we'll go into a little bit more detail about this. But um, you know, the idea is that originally, you know, when we have a, a site that's not developed, we've got the water comes down, and depending on where you are and the type of soils, it either soaks in, maybe soaks in a little bit, and then runs off. Um, but that runoff, once we develop that and we put a, a parking lot or a rooftop or something like that, it can't hold any water there anymore. And it's designed, we even design ours with crowns on the roads, et cetera, to get the water off fairly efficiently and into our waterways. Well, with, when it runs off, we can have things like trash, um, heavy metals, uh, which a lot of people don't realize, like our brake pads and so forth, have heavy metals in there. Every time we apply our brakes, a little bit of that dust is hitting onto the road. When we get that next rainfall event, it takes those little particles and takes them to the stream. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that we, um, are, are not worried about, but think about in terms of uh, developing best management practices to, to uh, help reduce that. And then I'd mentioned about some of the problems. The, um, one of the biggest problems with having those impervious surfaces and developing areas is we have to put some kind of BMP in there to treat the rate of runoff, because sometimes it's, you know, it's really hauling off those uh, impervious surfaces, and so it can cause scouring our streams. A lot of people have, have uh, you guys have probably been out uh, you know, in Denver, a lot of different places, and you see these stream banks that are really, they're pretty vertical, and they're, you know, they're about this high, and it's just, you can see the stream cutting down. That's called it scouring, or, or uh, um, and it, it, you end up seeing the stream bank sometimes slump into it. So that's, um, that's really the stream trying to equilibrate with that volume and rate of runoff. And that causes all kinds of other problems with the, the you know, the silt and, and dirt that runs down the stream, and then we can get fish kills, et cetera. 